Welcome back to this series on cloud workflow. Today we're going to speak about uh, sub workflows. So workflows are made of uh, sequences of steps and branches. Sometimes some particular sequence of steps can be repeated and we, it would be a good idea to avoid error prone repetitions in your workflow definition. In particular, if you change in one place and forget to change in another place. So you can modularize your definition by creating sub workflows, a bit like subroutines or functions in programming languages. If we step back a little, you remember that we write in the workflow YAML definition, we write step one, step two, step three. This is actually equivalent uh, to writing it in the main flow. The main flow, it's exactly as if you were wrapping those few steps within the steps of the main flow. And main, that's the default, the main uh, flow of actions. But now let's say you need to create a sub workflow that you want to be uh, reused somewhere in the main workflow. This is the same structure. So you name your sub workflow. It's, here it's called sub workflow. You've got the steps as usual. You've got one last step that is going to return some results, some expression. But notice that you also have a params uh, element where you can pass a list of parameters. Here I have two parameters param1, param2, you can have zero parameters. There can also be default values for parameters so that you can omit the second parameter here. How to use this uh, sub workflow? You're going to use the call syntax, call the name of your workflow. You're going to pass the argument and then the result which is returned by the sub workflow will be in this output variable. And then you can call that sub, sub workflow as many times as needed. Let's have a look at a concrete example. Here we have a main, our main workflow with two steps, a greeting step and a returning step. We're going to call the greet subroutine. And this subroutine or sub workflow is defined below there. Notice that it takes two parameters, a greeting and a name. There's a default value, well, if I don't pass the, the name. And uh, the step is going to return the concatenation of the greeting, a comma, and the name, and an exclamation mark. And how am I going to call that from the workflow? Okay, call greet, the name of my sub workflow. I'm passing the two parameters, greeting and name. I don't use the default value. And then the result is the concatenation is stored in this concatenation variable. And then the main workflow can return the concatenation. So let's execute this workflow and sub workflow. Okay, it succeeded, and as you can see, there's hello, Guillaume. We got the concatenation of hello and Guillaume. Now let's have a look at a concrete example. If you remember yesterday, we looked at uh, the integration with cloud logging. So here, I want to log several times throughout my main workflow steps. So here, I have two steps, and it's going to call my log message sub workflow with an argument called MSG with the first message, a second message. And let's see what the definition of the log message sub workflow looks like. So log message, that's na the name of my sub workflow. We pass a single parameter, which is the message that we want to output in the logs. Then you have the steps and the steps, is, well, there's actually just one step, the log, which calls the cloud logging REST API with an HTTP POST method. It's authenticated. And then uh, we define some uh, entries, the name of the logger, the resource, the text payload that is going to be uh, printed and returned in the output. Let's execute this workflow, clicking the execute button. It succeeded. Two logging message appeared, first message and second message. Using sub workflows is a very convenient way to regroup a set of steps so as to be able to reuse them, to give more structure to your workflow definition. It's a great way to reuse some logic in the workflow to give a better structure to your workflow YAML definition. That's about it. Thanks for watching.